Hi, and welcome to The Caption Life, a show for the most casual and dedicated fans of comics and a member of the Comic Watch family. I'm your host, Sean. Join me and discover what the world of comics and graphic novels have to offer. From one-on-one interviews with industry professionals, roundtable discussions with passionate fans, and reviews on the latest comics, TV shows, and movies. Now let's dive right on in. Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining us. If this is your first time, thanks for checking us out. If you're a returning listener, thanks for coming back. One of the things I absolutely love about the world of comics is how we can engage in that world through a number of different mediums. In addition to reading comics, we can also see our favorite characters come to life on screen. We can cosplay as our favorite characters. We can read books about them. We can even play games as though we're in that universe. Well, a while back, I came across a Twitter account whose focus is promoting a really interesting game that lives in the Marvel Universe called the Marvel Universe Online Project. I know there's a lot of Marvel games launched recently, like Marvel Snap, and we have some coming up. Uh, like Midnight Suns and Wolverine, but the Marvel Universe Online Project is different because this game is created and designed by someone outside of Marvel Entertainment, and it has a very unique take to it. So I asked the creator of the game to join our show today to talk to us more about it. So please welcome Michael Davenport. Also known as Marvel Mike, Michael has been lead writer and creative director of the Marvel Universe Online Project for the last 10 years, connecting with artists, writers, and developers within the comic and gaming communities. Outside of his day job, he supports the troops as a network analyst for the DOD, and Mike has been the face of the project, advocating it in interviews and podcasts across the internet while supporting a rotating team of creatives and help put together this extensive project. Mike, thank you for coming on the show. How are you doing today? I am doing excellent. I'm doing excellent. I want awesome. everyone to know that we are, we are, the, the concept of the Marvel Universe Online is an idea. I mean, it started a little over 10 years ago. And mm-hmm. we asked the question, what would it be like to have an all-encompassing video game that allowed you as an individual not to be Spider-Man or not to be Wolverine, but to be you? What would you be like as a character in the Marvel Universe? Mm-hmm. You know, and the, the folks that, that I used to run with back in the day, they played, you know, City of Heroes was a big influence on us. You know, a, a lot of games like Champions Online was a big influence for us. So right. we were early, early adopters of the entire superhero MMO genre before it was any, even, you know, a, a real genre yet. Right. So, yeah, that's that's where the inspiration came from. And it's a lot of it built from there. Yeah. No, and it's really cool. And and. Um, I know we're going to get into a little bit more of the nuances of what I thought was really interesting and neat about your game. Um, and so um, to start off with, I do want to say that I want to appreciate you coming on the show and uh, talking about because you are actually out of the United States currently. You're what country are you in right now? I am in Germany right now. Yes. Can I ask uh, what city? Is that OK? I was Wiesbaden. Wiesbaden oh, nice. Germany. Awesome. You know, I took... Go ahead. Sorry. (laughs) 45 45 minutes outside of Frankfurt. Oh, nice. So what's interesting is I took three years of German in high school and I've been to Germany once just at an airport, but I've always wanted to go visit there. So I think that's really cool that you're living there. And I just want to say, I appreciate you taking the time, uh, you know, from Germany to come on the show, because I think you are, what do we figure out? Like seven or eight hours ahead or something like that? Seven or eight hours ahead. Yes. 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 Yeah. So for me, it's, a you know, it's a 12 o'clock for you. It's in the evening. So I know it's not too late, um, but I appreciate you coming on the show and, and talking about that. So to start off with, I always like to ask our guests, what is your comic book origin story? Was there someone or something that got you into comics that, after that moment, you're like, this is it. I want to you know, dive into that world. What, what's your origin story there? Back in 1982, mm-hmm. my uncle came back from overseas and he was a big comic book fan. Yeah. And I was like 12 years old at the time. And he let me read one of his graphic novels. It was uh, God Loves, Man Kills, the X-Men graphic novel. Yeah. And... It was it was to say the least for a twelve year old. It was it was hard. It was a hard hitting comic book. I was I was amazed, mm-hmm. and it, from that point on, I I was I was hooked. Yeah. So the X Men, you know, of course, before then, you you know, as a kid, I watched you know Spider Man and his amazing friends. You know, the the Electric Company Spider Man. Every time you know a little bit of you know the Superman old Superman shows everything. You know, but when I read that comic for the first time, that graphic novel. That was it for me. I knew that these would this would be my thing from now on, mm-hmm. and it, it just blossomed from there. 
That's awesome. You know, I love hearing that because that is very similar to my origin story. My uncle got me into comics as well, too. And the one, the very first comics I read was X-Men. It was it was the first issue, not the first print, but it was the first issue of X-Men. Yeah. So our story is very similar in that regard. I love that. That's so cool. <laughs> um, well, the next question I had was, what exactly is the Marvel Universe Online Project? But I know you kind of answered that. So um, I wanted to maybe dive in a little bit more. Of what was the motivation for you to create this game and how long have you been working on it? Well, it's more, it's more, I want to get, I want the, the audience to, to understand it's more of a pitch project. Right. Because we do, we don't have licensing. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I do a regular dance with, uh, with the Marvel execs about getting licensing. But right. it, it's, it started out as a, as a concept built on the things that we saw in other games. Mm-hmm. Uh, a collection of, of ideas that, that blossomed from, like I said, City of Heroes, which had a lot of potential, but it really didn't take off before its sunset. Back mm-hmm. in 2012, I believe it was. And then, uh, of course, after that, it was uh, Champions Online, which, fun fact, after City Hero Sunset, I, I took, you know, I took all of the ideas that me and my friends had put together. And I reached out to Jack Emmert, the, okay. uh, the creator of City of Heroes, yeah. to ask him directly, you know, what happened? You know, because uh, apparently after City of Heroes Sunset and Jack moved on, uh, Marvel had actually approached him about doing a, a, a superhero game, doing a mm-hmm. superhero MMO. The original, and, and a lot of people have probably remember seeing the original advertisements for the first Marvel Universe Online game. Right. So if you see the, those, it's like short video clips of the, the the actual figures, you know, in a this, it was a really short thing. But basically, mm-hmm. we took. We actually took so that if you anyone if you look at us on social media, our icon, our our avatar is that original icon. Mm-hmm. So that's that's where the Marvel Universe Line project originated from. Nice, awesome. Yes. So he he gave me a lot of pointers about what happens behind the scenes uh-huh. with these kind of deep with these kind of negotiations, and. Uh, from there, I just I still started digging more and more into it. I had people helping me out from time to time, of you know, explaining the, the background about you know how games are actually made. You know, right. I, I didn't want to be one of these people that just had an idea and then that was that. You know, right. I, I did the legwork. I'm I'm an analytical type of person, so you know, I, I did the research. I reached out to companies. I reached out to companies like, uh, um, what was it, uh, uh, Cry Cry Engine. We reached out to CryEngine and had them explain to us how how um, development pipelines typically work. Right. You know, the amount of people that that is involved in a typical AAA game, for example. Mm-hmm. You know, we had them explain those the, those details to us in a way that we could formulate. You know, what our next moves in in putting together a presentation. Right. And, and, and from there, it, everything just started building on top of you know, one, one move, on top of another move, on top of another move. And then, you know, uh, Hero, Marvel Heroes, at that point, Marvel Heroes sunset. It. So that was another indication that, yeah, you know, the, 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 the niche is there. You know, there, there is a customer base for that type of game. Marvel he- Heroes proved that, mm-hmm. you know, but unfortunately, you know, uh, circumstances behind the scenes never allow these kind of games to blossom to their full potential. Right. And so we just kept in the background, chugging along, chugging along, chugging along, more, more concepts, more, you know, more resources, you know, more inquiries, you know, into different, you know, areas of the genre itself, you know, in gaming, you know, my, you know, I, I consider myself very knowledgeable of comics, but I'm not super, I'm not the end all to be all of Marvel information. So of course we reach out to the two, you know, comic experts as well you know we talked to you know i talked to uh the i talked to um elliot brown if mm-hmm. you don't know who elliot brown is elliot brown make the artwork for the official handbook of the marvel universe yeah yeah yes elliot brown so again another resource i reached out to and talked to him. he had a lot of great insights on you know the comic aspect of it you know how right. marvel does things how marvel's how Marvel focuses on the details of the characters and their worlds and their environments and how he, you know, in his instance, how he structured that to make those, you know, the artwork for those handbooks. That's awesome. 
yeah. Yeah, it was a lot. It is a lot of a lot of legwork. Mm -hmm. Oh, it sounds <laughs> it like it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I bet. So when when you're working on this project and, and you know, like you said, I, I appreciate you clarifying that this is not an actual game yet. It's more of a pitch deck yes. to try to make this uh, a reality. Um, yes. As you had said, it sounds like you're trying to make things as accurate as possible. Do you have any liberty to kind of veer off a little bit? Because one thing is I, I also want to ask you is that it, I think I read somewhere that this lives in Earth 619. And I'll be honest, I don't know if there's actually an established Earth 619 in the Marvel universe. And if it is, is that a way for you to be able to try to keep as accurate as possible, but be able to tell and veer off from the continuity of 616 as well, or, or tell us a little bit about that process. There is a, we, we did a lot of research to find a version of uh, an earth designation that wasn't, if not used at all, mm -hmm. but was minimally used. And there is a brief mention of an earth 619 in a, in a, I guess it was back in the Spider Verse, okay. But it, it came and went, so we wanted a designated that was as close to six one six as possible. Mm -hmm. So we chose six one nine since it's technically not on the books anymore, right? So that gave us the leeway to um, alter certain characters' histories. The, the point is, we had to take well, we had to take the orig original versions of these characters and these mm -hmm. worlds from 616 and we had to diverge them at a particular point so that would make you know narrative sense for there to be all of these new new uh people with superpowers in mm -hmm. the world and how you know what led up to that so we have an extensive you know history of, of what happened where everything began to diverge and, and what we what we promote is that in the end, when players actually get a chance to play this game, what they'll want to do is they'll want to interact with as many characters, known characters in the Marvel Universe as possible to right. find out in their history where things went different. Mm -hmm. You know, so you'll discover, you'll learn more about how Earth 619 differs from 616 by your interactions with the character the NPCs that you, you meet. You know, so we, we, we give, you know, on the website, we, we give people... Uh, an opportunity to read a few of the bios. So we have a sampling of bios of, of different characters and how their histories changed. And we do that on purpose. We basically take their, their origin stories from 616. We pick a particular point in their history to diverge, to allow them to exist at the point where the game begins. Gotcha. Yes. So kind of like what, what we saw happen in, in the Loki series, right? Just kind of veer off of that a little Ex bit. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> small deviations, yeah. small deviations lead characters into different directions that eventually lead to the point where our story be our Earth 619 story begins. Basically, awesome. our, our, our version begins at our version of Civil War. Oh, cool. Okay. So, so, so in... And talking about that, that sounds like a lot of fun to be able to take something that's kind of already established and then create a world by changing a particular yes. event and all that. Can, can you tell us a little bit more of like what character histories or um, events that you all have changed to make that happen? You said Civil War is kind of the starting point. Is there other um, events that you all changed that, you know, one, you said like it had to, but two, was a lot of fun to be able to change and come up with a new story for them? Yes. For example, Wanda, Wanda never went insane. Oh, okay. Wanda never went insane because Doctor Strange and and Agatha Agatha uh, Hark Agatha Harkin discovered back in back originally when she fought Chiton that mm -hmm. there was a sliver of his essence in her mind that would years later, and you would see that in the regular comp mark, you know. Uh, um scarlet witch's comic you see her slowly her mind slowly deteriorate right well on 619 dr strange and agatha harkness discovered that sliver in her mind removed it right around the time that things began to go south but wanda was able to become a, an actual functioning superhero so with wanda not losing her mind that opened that that opened up a lot of things. First of all, in, uh, you know, uh, no more mutants didn't happen. Right. 
You know, the, the, right. uh, ex, the Avengers disassembled never happened. Yeah. So the, a chain of events, because she didn't have that those episodes, a chain of events allowed us to open up possibilities by the fact that those major events never happened. Mm -hmm. So the world is still has all of the Avengers that supposedly died at in Avengers disassembled and the world is still populated by a full host of mutants. That's awesome. So yeah, we get to play with that. Now we have, we set the stage so that at that point, when, when uh, civil war happens, the, the, the slate is full of everybody who could possibly be involved in it. Mm -hmm. Now, our version of civil war, we call it the global civil war. Okay. Now, global in the fact that it, you know, in the comedy was just superheroes versus superheroes in their disagreement as far as being registered. Right. Well, the, something happened before all of this that led to making this, uh, making this disagreement, this conflict, a global one. Well, basically what happened, three supervillains figured out a way of giving everyone on Earth, well, most people, uh, most people on Earth, well, I don't even say most people, I would say probably about 30% of the human population, superpowers. Mm -hmm. So random people on the street just burst, you know, have powers. You know, you can read that on, on the website. It's called, basically, they, we call it the event. And when okay. the event happened, just random people just developed super abilities. And that's the players, that's us building up to the players' involvement in the game. Right. So this led the world governments to, to not know what to do with it. So this, you know, of course, that leads to, you know, we have to do something with all these superpower people. So uh, the legislation of the world government was to register them. And hence, you know, civil war. Mm -hmm. There, every you know, it was it's a, it wasn't just the superheroes fighting. It's ev your neighbors, you against your neighbors. Your neighbors might agree that you need to be controlled, or you may agree that your neighbors need to be controlled, or vice versa. Mm -hmm. So it was it's fighting on every street around the world, and superheroes were right in in the middle of it. Even supervillains had to decide at some point what they were going to do in a situation where, you know, anyone could pop up with superpowers. Right. So it was a catastrophe of epic proportions. Mm -hmm. So it, yeah. <laughs> so the, the, the player, the player, the player interjects at the end of this. So you, so the world is recovering. We found a solution. Uh, everyone, you know, on the hero side, Everyone has taken the lesson from Charles Xavier and mm -hmm. decided to open these facilities to train all of these people with superpowers and how to control and use their powers more constructively. Right. So that's where the player comes in. He chooses this different school where he wants to go. Xavier, Avengers, Fantastic Four, Doc Strange. We have all these different houses represented for superheroes and supervillains decided to do the same thing covertly. Mm -hmm. So. That is that is your premise in a nutshell. And from that's there, you discover everything about the world and how it differs from what you know. That's awesome. Well, that sounds really fascinating. And, you know, just coming up with a brand new idea of changing one thing, but then, you know, making another cataclysmic event happen. Yeah. And as you had mentioned, one of the things about this game that I absolutely love the idea is that the user can create their own character that lives in this Marvel yes. 619. And in doing so, it updates the game handbook with the character yes. stats, which I think that's so amazing. That's such a great yes. idea. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about the origin behind that idea and just, you know, anything about the user creating their, their own uh, character in there? Like, you know, my guess is they can either be a hero or, or can they select to be a villain and what else they can do with that? You can, you're, of course, beginning, you know, the, the whole idea was that, you know, we wanted the, 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 it, it all to be comic book based. Mm -hmm. So we wanted you to feel like this was, you know, your comic book. Right. So the beginning, so we designed the, the, the character creation tool to look like an entry in the official handbook of the Marvel Universe. And right. that, you know, from there, you, you, you see where it's going to go. You see that, you know, this is going to be, this is you're, you're creating your avatar. You're creating a version of yourself, however you want to create it. 
and you put in uh, you know your first few lines of blurb that's originally you mm-hmm. you put in your origin story there and you know talking to people who who, who write scripts of uh, 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 branching narratives mm-hmm. we came to the idea that hey why don't we is, would it be possible that certain missions as a player plays a game would add to their their bio and it's, there there really wasn't any limit you know there wasn't a barrier to that being possible mm-hmm. so that's where the whole idea came from and plus i re- I'm, I'm a big fan of the handbooks i really am i'm a huge fan of the handbooks right. it was a, it was a shame when they stopped making it. so i thought well why don't we f- you know focus the 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 player's creation in a handbook Mm-hmm. And from there, the concept led to the idea of being able to take these these character sheets that you create for your character, trade them, you know, collect other people's bios and, and build your own handbooks. You know, right. you can, you know, volumes and volumes of your all your friends characters and build a, build your own handbook. So and from there, the from there, we, we looked at a, a business aspect of it and, and found that, you know, why not take that even further and have players be able to create actual books? Mm-hmm. You know, so you can, you know, you create these these books virtually, mm-hmm. but you could also, you know, spend a little extra money and have them created as, you know, actual paperback books, you know, comics that you could collect. Yeah. Not just other players, but actual NPCs as well. You're co- you're collecting this information because the information is actually as you play the game. If you're fighting an NPC, it's valuable information that you get from those NPC stats that allow you to to fight them effectively. Mm-hmm. So it all ties together to the handbook. You know, every character in the game has an entry in a handbook. You may not discover it yet, but that'll be part of the gameplay aspect that you go out there and you interact with these characters. You know, he's super, non-super characters depends. You know, it doesn't matter. You know, they'll have a stat. They'll have a, a, a handbook entry that you can collect for information. Someone's at the front door. Right. And that's, you know, it it, 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 it was a no-brainer for us to say, hey, this is where we're going to focus it. This is where we get, this is where the, the, the main in, interest in the game should, should focus mm-hmm. right here. You know, this is where it all, you know, the, the everything else orbits around the handbook. Right. As, as feature wise. So it, it was, I think it, it, it's right now it's one of the most popular aspects of the project. Oh, I bet. Yeah. I mean, that yeah. when I was reading your website, like that was the thing that really intrigued me the most is doing this sort of thing where we can be ourselves part of the universe. And I think that's just right. such an interesting and unique idea to be able to try to implement. And it sounds really cool to do that. And I can even see not just having a character sheet in a handbook, but be able to translate that into uh, even like trading cards and have people yes. create trading cards and, and yes. do that sort of thing. I, I love that idea because I think this allows people to not only live through the characters, but to feel like they're part of this universe that they're interacting yes. with some of their favorite people and they can be at that same level as exactly. well yeah so exactly. i love that idea yeah and 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 it gives us an opportunity to to make the make the game profitable outside of the normal realm of monetization right you know it, it i want people to feel like they're getting value if you put more money in this in this game beyond what you paid for to play it there should be value in it. right and i feel that your creative abilities should add value to your game experience Right. And this was a this was a logical way to do that. Yeah. No, I think that's great. I so I love hearing everything about this project. I think this is amazing. And I'm just curious, how can listeners and other people hear about your project get involved? Is there something that they can support you in this? How if they're really interested and would like to see this like come to life or just support it any other way, what can they do? Well, a hundred percent. Well, we do have a we do have a Patreon and we do have a coffee account. A hundred percent of the, to, to keep us above board, a hundred percent of those profits go directly to the the artists that help us create the concepts for the game. Gotcha. So that money goes directly to them. I have a motto. I have a motto in this project that says, uh, "I say everyone gets paid in this project except me." <laughs> <laughs> Nice. That that's fine. Everyone is, and 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 it's important that we do this in the way that we're doing it by uh, 
bringing in creatives within the community. Right. You know, we, we want to, we want to show that, that this project is about them. So mm-hmm. the version of the handbook that we have on a webpage is designed to feature new artists. Every entry is a different artist. And we, we take the money that we get donated to, to commission those artists to come on and do an entry in the handbook. So we showcase their work as well. You know, this is the, com- com- we call it the community edition of the handbook. Right. That's so awesome. The more, the more people that we can get to support us that way, the more options we have to reach out. And not only just artists, we eventually want to get, you know, we want to get more writers involved. We want to get game developers because the technical aspect, I, I'll be the first to admit the technical aspect of, of the website is a little lacking. And that is because we want to maintain a level of professionalism that costs. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we want to get, uh, I have people who would love to get involved, but, you know, like I said, their time is important to them and I want to make sure that they're fairly compensated. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's great. I love hearing that. Yeah. And and that's, that's what, I mean, we get a lot of complaints. We get a lot of complaints that it's moving very slow, but honestly, that that's the reason why we, we want to make sure that everyone involved in this project feels that that they're being you know fairly compensated for their efforts because i for one know that times are tough right and i want everyone to know you know I, you know recognition you know you know promotion is is all well and good but you know we all gotta eat oh yeah definitely well and, and i think that's a great um, thing to keep in mind as well too with all the things that we've been hearing from artists in the actual comics industry about how there have been um, a number of times that they felt like they've been sort of changed and not fairly compensated for their work so i love hearing that you're you know trying to do that with this uh pitch deck of a game idea and yeah. so i think that's wonderful I, th- I think that's great to try to do that so that's awesome and if you if you don't if you don't feel you don't have the opportunity to donate to to one of those avenues, the best mm-hmm. thing you can do for us is to spread the word. Right. I tell that everyone on all every every platform on social media that we're on, the mm-hmm. best thing you can do for us is to spread the word because the more people that hear about us, the more people would hear about us. So the, the right. right ears, once you know, once word gets to the right ears mm-hmm. and they pay more attention to us, then you know things things can start to happen right you know the the idea is that you, the idea is that you gotta want it yeah yeah you know? <laughs> i can build the framework but mm-hmm. we i can build the field but we gotta get people to come <laughs> to watch right. the game <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? yep. you know, that's that's the thing i need <laughs> we need people out there in every corner of social media and beyond spreading the word about the marvel universe online project yeah i love talking about it i will talk ad nauseum about it every aspect of it if anyone has questions i'm always available online to discuss it and i'll make sure to uh put a link to your website in the show notes here as well too so if anyone's listening to this and they want to check it out you can definitely look at the show notes and there'll be a link to the website that you can find more information about it so awesome thank you well um i like to end every episode with our guests to talk about the comics that we're currently reading. And I know you and I had a conversation before we started recording about this, um, but I want to ask you what uh, comics are you currently reading or that you're keeping uh, on top of? Because I know with this project, you're probably, you know, keeping an eye out for things uh, that's happening in the world of comics, especially in the Marvel universe. So I just want to ask you, what are you currently reading or at least being uh, keeping an eye out for? Keeping an eye out on the X Men. This thing with Sinister right now. Yes, is funny business. Funny business. Yes, funny yeah. business. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm watching him. I'm watching him. I'm watching Hulk too. Oh yeah, funny. Funny business. Right. <laughs> Yeah, and and if you're not familiar with the X Men story, uh, there was a big event called the uh, House of X Powers of Ten, yes. where all the mutants are now living on an island design. It's a living island designed for mutants uh, called Krakoa that they can live safely. And the whole story is that they kind of made a deal with um, humanity of Earth, saying that you know they let them be um, just you know leave them alone and basically and let them live on this island then uh professor x had actually figured out the way to give all of humanity you know medicine for them to you know be cancer free and even extend their life by like i think 10 or 20 years or something like that um since then there's been a lot of spin-off series 
of the X-Men. And I have to say, I got away from reading from comics around high school. So I just got back into it like five years ago and I have not been keeping up with all the things that's going in X-Men stories. And so I read the house of X powers of 10 and one as confusing as it was, it was really exciting, but I will say that I was a little lost trying to read and, and follow what was going on. But since then there's been a number of side story arcs that plays into the story that it's hard to keep top of all the stories that's happening. So for me, I'm just following Immortal X-Men, which is a great story because you kind of see what's been happening at the leadership level. Um, but there's a lot of other spinoff series that um, are kind of many teams for the X-Men and everything. And so it's been really interesting. So um, yeah, Immortal X-Men for me is something I've been keeping on top of. Absolutely. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. It'll blow your mind trying to keep up with all of it. <laughs> oh yeah well and, and it's a great story but again there's oh, yeah. a lot that's going on yeah you're oh, yeah. totally right so um <laughs> for me so one of the things i want to say is that usually um i invite listeners to share what comics they're reading um unfortunately i wasn't able to do that this week because i'm recording at an earlier time than i usually do uh, because of scheduling and everything like that so i had just asked people what comics are reading and so i feel like there wasn't gonna be a lot of opportunity to do a quick flip around so there won't be listeners um uh and uh what, what am i trying to say here um so there won't be any listener mentioned comics here just for that reason but for the next episode, I'll definitely put a call out and make sure to include everybody's in the episode. But for me, uh, I've been talking about how I'm going to be reading um, Superman, Son of Kal-El. I still haven't started it yet. It's still on my to-do list. I've just been really busy with everything. But on top of that, um, there are three comics I just picked up this week that I'm looking forward to. One of them is uh, Star Wars Visions, which if you haven't heard of before, it's a series uh, that's anime on uh, Disney+. Plus. That is fantastic. I'm not an anime person, but I watched that show and it is a wonderful, wonderful show. And so I picked up that issue of Star Wars Visions. That's supposed to be, um, I think, a not a retelling, but adding on to the stories that's already been told in the series. Um, I also got Superman Cal L Return special that just came out from DC Comics. And then last but not least, I also got uh, DC's Grifter got ran over by a reindeer, which is DC's holiday comic that they just released this year as well, too. So those are the ones I'm planning on reading. I have not read yet, but I'm very excited about that. I will share that I did get to read Planet Hulk World Break uh, World Breaker for Comic Watch. And I haven't read a lot of Hulk comics, but that issue was really fantastic. And so it's one of those stories that I'm probably going to pick up the trade paperback once it's done because it is a really intriguing story. It's probably one that is a little bit reminiscent because there's been a lot of Planet Hulk stories that's been told, but I feel like this one's a little bit different. I think it's a lot more of a um, mystery to figure out, you know, what's going on. Almost like a series of loss where they talk about what's happened in the past and you don't know what's going on. And so they're kind of going back and forth a little bit to share, you know, the stories and everything. So um, if you haven't read Planet Hulk World Breaker, I definitely recommend picking that up and checking that out. So. All right. Well, Mike, thank you very much for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. Before I let you go, can you share with everybody where they can find you and your work online? We are everywhere. <laughs> Literally. We are everywhere. We are on Facebook. We have a Facebook page that I'm very proud of. We are on Twitter. We are on Instagram. We are on LinkedIn. You can <laughs> I actually have an article I wrote on LinkedIn. Yes. So. <laughs> and I'll link that in the show notes as well, too. Yes. Yeah. We are also we are also on uh, the new ones. We're on uh, uh, Hive. We're on mm -hmm. Mastodon. We're on Tumblr. <laughs> Plus, we have our Patreon page. We have our coffee page. And of course, the website, www.themarveluniverseonline.com. Awesome. And then on, on social media, is it uh, the same uh, username for all of them? We try to use it as close as possible, Marvel underscore MMO or Marvel MMO. Gotcha. So you will definitely find us. Awesome. Awesome. Great. And like I said, I'll link the website um, in the show notes as well. And that should have all the links to your social media as well, too. So. All right. All right. Well, thanks again, Mike. I really appreciate you coming on the show. And best of luck to this project. All right. Thanks, sir. 
And that wraps up another episode of The Caps of Life. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. You can follow us on social media at Caps and Life. For more information about us and all of our previous episodes, visit thecapsandlife.com. 